But um, yeah, I did. Well, that Tyler Veller guy, he was on Myth Vision talking about how he's deconverted from being a Christian. And he said something, like I said, I'll have to like find the timestamps to, to let it play. But it really blew my mind. He literally said, um, the, the Myth Vision guy said something about like, well, what happened uh, when you prayed to heaven? Did you did you think that, you know, did God hear your prayer? Like, like because he was talking about how he like deconverted from being a Christian. He's like, what, what happened when you prayed? And the Tyler Vela guy's answer just blew me away. He's like, he's like, oh, well, I never thought that if I prayed to heaven, it would ever change God's will because, you know, I never believed that. No reform person believes that. And well, it gets kind of complicated. And I, and, and like I said, it's like, whoa, like that's, that's insane to me to say that. It's like, you literally don't think that your prayer has any way to change or, or well, let me put you on that, Ryan. Let me, uh-huh. let me tell you why people say that in prayer this is complicated and even and, and, and people like philosophy talk about this that are christians it's like do you think your prayer is going to make god better like is god going to heal someone that if you didn't pray he wouldn't have healed them so are you saying you pray to make god better what do you mean make better? i mean like you, do you, does god does god, does god do more good you're things you're in the, the world because you prayed or not well, what, what, what it's, it's not his overall total who he is character is not in question at any point ever. His, his name is never going to be better or worse. Again, I'm not a Calvinist. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I know. I'm just saying like, so to start off, like him saving one more person is, is what he does no matter what. But if that person doesn't ask, then they're not doing what they're supposed to do to receive that mercy. So, I mean, we have, the question: we have, you didn't pray with that person. Like, if you're saying, "God, send something, send something to this person, please, to to draw them to you," and then let's say your prayer is answered and the person becomes gets saved. Now, if you didn't pray, are you saying that person was going to be lost? So you saved them by your prayer? Well, what I'm saying is, like in in uh, Hezekiah's example. As, as one example or Jonah's example, some of the verses that I put down earlier today, um, you know, their prayer immediately impacted God's decision on saving them. And, and he decided to give Hezekiah 15 more years. He decided to save Jonah from the, the, the Sheol. Cause, cause well, right. Know, like Calvinists, uh, most Calvinists will say they'll pray for people and they'll say, they'll say something like God, save this person forget about their free will do what they need do whatever needs to happen so that they'll be saved and then and it's like and, the, and calvinists joke about how non-calvinists are always uh you know you guys pray like you're a calvinist saying god save that person and you don't give a damn about the free will when you you want just want god to save them you pray like a calvinist and they're right in a sense I have hey, to give again, a sense. you're confusing me by what you're saying we pray like a calvinist i, I yeah, we say God save that person. We don't say God, um, you know, free up their free will so that they can save themselves. We say God save them. Period. Don't we? You're yeah, well. It, God's going to save them, but I'm still. No, obviously, confused. we believe the person has free will and they can resist. Maybe right. Yeah, I'm still confused on what you're trying to say. If you I'm saying, say I'm saying we want God to do whatever it'll take to get that person saved so that they'll be compelled to, to, to have faith. We don't say, we don't say, um, give them a free will decision to choose you, God. We already think they have that. So when we ask God to do something to help that person have faith, we don't ask him to do what we already think he's doing. That is giving them free will to choose him. We ask him to save them, just save them, get them saved, do the, do whatever needs to happen so that they will be saved. We don't care about, their free will we already believe they have it we're asking god to go out of his way to do what is ever what he would know was necessary for them to believe that maybe isn't happening and so in that sense we're asking god to just make it happen we're not saying violate their free will but we're saying just make it happen and that's the issue that's kind of like the that's kind of the um but how hold on how is that if you if you're saying a prayer to god asking him to do something for you and you just understand that it's his decision. I'm still confused on why that makes it like a Calvinist. Because we're not asking God to, to um, you know, give give them what they already have. That is free will to choose him. They're not choosing him. 
what, 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 to do. And so we want to them to compel them. Hold on. The reason this is kind of confusing to start is because you're saying you're praying for another person. So I think. Yeah, but you're asking God to do what he knows in his wisdom what, if that's necessary if if it is possible. Yeah, but, but what are you supposed to pray for in that situation? Are you like, it doesn't make sense. I'm saying that's a good prayer. There's nothing somebody, wrong with it. Hold on. If somebody's got cancer or something, make much. Yeah, that's me to uh, God. Um, make them open their hearts to you and see you because it's it's like I'm, I'm asking God to intervene with their free will at that point. You're always going to just say, God, you know, show this person your love, have mercy on them, so on and so forth. Yeah. Do what it will take. Give them a sign. Send somebody, make something happen in their life so that you know if you do that thing, they'll believe. And so here's the question. Like now, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm just, as my point is, then the question is this, are you concerned with their free will? Or are you concerned with them just God doing what they need to do to be saved? Now, here's another question. What, why does one man believe in not another? Is, does, is there something God could do in every person's life, such as say what he did in Paul's life, where he literally came down and Paul, why are you, Jesus comes down, blinds everybody. Paul has a literal vision, or I mean, a literal encounter with the risen Christ. And he reveals himself to him, tells him who he is. And then the Christian killing Jew that hates Christians, that's going about his business killing Christians because he thinks they're false, it has an encounter with the risen Christ and becomes a the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles and, and lives the rest of his life serving Christ and is obviously saved. Now, could God do that for everybody? And, and why doesn't he? And if he did, would every single person believe or be compelled to have to believe? And why doesn't he do that for everybody? And if you pray that God does that for this or that person, was he not going to do that if you never prayed? And now you've prayed and now he's going to save that person because you prayed that now, now it's up to you that people got saved. I mean, these are the issues that are hard to answer that. And so that's why I give Calvinists a break because of these kinds of things. When I come like, look, whatever God isn't doing that he could do, could more people believe if God did more to reveal himself to them? Maybe. Well, that's that's what the Tyler Vela guy was kind of like making a, a big argument about because he said like, well, I was asking God to just do anything. I was at the point where I wasn't asking for a huge significant sign. I, I just wanted something, even a, a small voice in my head. Yeah, and God never did it. And he lost his faith. Couldn't God that's have not, done it that's not, that's not true, though. That's not do true. Know? We don't know. I do. Like, could, could you, okay, look, if God had answered those prayers and, and said it spoke to him or give him a sign, do you think he would have stopped believing? What, what I what I what I know is is people don't know how to interpret what God's communicating at times. And no, I don't know exactly what happened in that man's life. I'm not gonna say I know what happened in his heart, his mind, and his soul. I wasn't there. It was between him and God. But what I'm saying is I know God. And I know God's nature. And I know that that man, if he continued in his pursuit of finding God, he knows already that he's not supposed to put God to the test. So he knows that. And and, and you have to take that very seriously because Jesus says only a wicked and perverse generation ask for a sign. So right off the start, you're not off to a good start. You shouldn't be asking for a sign. What you should but be, but you doing. did, or I did, and I got a sign. I, I, I kept believing, I, and you did too. So I, I, I don't. I, I, I listen. I, I ask for truth. I ask for bad news and good news. I, I, I don't know how to explain how my my whole connection. You know how I how I um, you know, create my own direct communication with God. Hey, well, maybe you're elect and he isn't. No, it's not anything to do with that. It's, 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 you have to be aware that you're, it, is it possible he missed the sign? Like, can we, can we, because we can't be in this Calvinist, like hard Calvinist world where it's, well, if he missed the sign, it's God's fault because God could have made him catch it. Like you can't just keep running. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. No, I'm I know. Just, but that's, that's, that, that's what they like to do, though. They like to keep running to the excuse of passing the buck on 
to, well, God's sovereign, so God should have did this, God should have did that. When, I mean, there's an example of this in scripture. I forget which king it was, but like God, you know, gave him a sign, but he didn't catch it. So he ended up dying. I'll have to Google which one it was. It may have, it wasn't Hezekiah, I don't think, but it, it was, it was a, it was one of the kings. Um, but, but regardless is it's more likely than not that he was looking for the sign in the wrong manner. That that's what I'd have to say. And first off, like I said, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think what happens is people like, you know, like you're hurting and you want to just be healed and you don't realize that God's going to heal you, but he's going to do it in, in, in the way he chooses. And it's going to be the way that, you know, it, it may be better for you and um, most likely is better for you. But sometimes those are hard pills to swallow. So in those situations, it's like in Job, you have the choice to build up resentment and anger towards God, frustration towards God, or you have the, the choice to remain humble towards God. And I, I don't know what he was exactly doing. I don't know how much he humbled himself. So I'm not trying to judge that. But what I, I'm saying is like, he, he could still find ways. And I, and, and I also want to make it clear that he still believes in God. And, and he, when he was asked the question, would you like tell people to, to not believe in God? Would you help people like also deconvert that are, or like, would you tell a person that's trying, he was asked the question, would you tell a person that's trying to become a, a, a Christian not to become a Christian? He said, no, I wouldn't do that. So to me, what's, what's kind of like ironic in a way is I think he still is neglecting the fact how much God is still with him and, and fighting those battles for him and with him. So I think people, like, like, for instance, I'll give my own life. When I was not a Christian for 35 years and, you know, I didn't go to church or have any Bible study or any of that. I never read the Bible for 35 years, literally in my life. I still always in the back of my mind and my heart thought if I killed somebody, God's going to hold me accountable to someday. So obviously that has to do with my upbringing, how my parents raised me. Cause they did, my parents didn't raise me as atheist parents. They raised me to believe in God. They just didn't make us choose a religion because my mom's side was Jewish and my dad's side was Catholic. So they just chose not to, you know, I don't know. They, they didn't have us go into organized religion, but they I did. guess you were one of the elect. You were chosen. No, it's, 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 it's one of those things where I just, in the back of my mind and heart. Lucky thought, you, Ryan, you were chosen by God before the foundation of the world and Tyler Vela wasn't. That's not how it, it works though, because I made a conscious moral choice of having empathy. For oh, people. look at you. You saved yourself. Congratulations. No, no, I had a conscious moral choice to, to, to think if I killed somebody else, that that is a wrong act. And I would think that there's a, a God or a judge or justice that would judge me just like man would judge a, a murder. So it's not like this, you know, crazy leap of, of uh, trust and conscious that has a person think like, well, that's wrong. I, I know I'll be held accountable for that in some way, shape or form. Even the people that don't believe in God, but just believe in the universe and karma believe that. So, well, that okay. Okay. So, so look, Oh, okay. I get it. God saved you willy nilly. Okay. That's better. I'm not a Calvinist. I think it's wrong. I think it can confuse God's character in certain ways. If you take it too far, uh, I have, there's things I like about Calvinists and the way they uh, operate as far as, you know, pastorally and as Christians, they keep certain things in mind that other Christians lose sight of. I, I'm, but ultimately I'm not a Calvinist, but uh, my, I think the only proper way is what I hate is when the Osassers are like, Oh yeah, this is what Calvin and do Calvinism does to people. And they might not be wrong. That could be true. Right. I, I don't think ultimately it's correct. Although they get a lot of things right that other Christians don't about God and that are good, that are correct for sure. In my opinion, now, but ultimately, I don't think it's right. And so I don't I don't believe that way. But I think when they start saying things like it was his Calvinism, whether that's true or not, uh, you know, that's not fair, in my opinion. But I would say this. It's not fair to claim that or say, like, you know, I've heard a lot of people be like, oh, yeah, well, he he doesn't even understand who God is. You know, do you know what the implications of what you're saying are? You know, these people, it's like, are you are you sure? Because it's a hard issue. But 
when people say, oh, he was he, he went out from us because he was not of us. To me, this is this is an opportunity for Christians who think it's so easy to get saved. And it is easy to believe and be saved. And, but you have to continue in it. It's not. Look, if you say he was never saved, then I, I if you think that, then I think you're probably not saved because that guy defended the faith. He trusted God. He had faith in God for his justification. He knows what the gospel is, and he stopped believing. So now, here's the question. How should we respond? Should we say he's an evil demon that never really believed? I think that's nonsense. Yeah, no. What I wanted to say, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I wanted to make a point right after what you said when you said he stopped believing. To me, I see it so differently than somebody that comes from a Calvinist perspective. I don't think he stopped believing in God because he didn't. He still believes in God. He believes in God still. He's he said he's a theist still. Yeah, but he rejects Christ. He's 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 in a moment of his life where he's questioning Christianity and he is unfortunately questioning things about the Bible which ends up leading him to questioning Christ and the and the validity of the scriptures. To me that isn't a person that is totally lost. And, and I know in God's eyes, that person's not totally lost either. So I'm not crazy when I say that. I think, like you said, anybody that calls that person a reprobate is is worse than he is because they're judging someone. They're judging his heart when they know nothing of his heart. His heart could be exactly what God wants it to be at this moment. God did. Yeah, but are you, so you're not going to say that God yeah, determined him to stop believing. <laughs> No, he did not determine him to right. stop. Right, so this is the rub. It's like, it's like I will not say that he was never saved, and I won't even say that if he died right now he wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know that, but it is. But the problem with that is, so look, I would say we have hope for it, and but the question we can't say that he he's right before God if he's openly rejecting Christ. I mean, if anybody's not saved, it's someone who who who's ex, who's known the gospel, the way of righteousness, and turned their back on it and doesn't believe anymore. If anybody's lost. It's the person who knows the gospel and rejects it. If anyone is lost, it's them. He made. But, I hear your point, bro, because the scriptures say the servant that knows more will be beaten with many blows. But I also disagree with you because I don't care if he read scriptures for 20 years and, and, and identified as a Calvinist and said he taught it. If, if he hasn't had the relationship with the Holy Spirit, like me and you have, well, it sounds like you have, I'm sure, you know, from what you've told me, I know I have, uh, and all the experiences I have had in the supernatural way, then how do we know that he's actually really had the true faith, evidence, belief that he needed to qualify as somebody that truly understood God's real and the gospel i mean he holds to these doctrines that are dangerous and mess up his ability to do that he holds to these doctrines that his prayers don't affect anything he holds to uh, yeah but what, but what saves you what you do are you justified by way by what you do are you justified by trusting christ i just want to show this hold on let me just show I, I hear you i hear you like maybe he never did know christ i just yeah well that's the thing that's my point i want to just show this verse real quick to, to show Jesus in verses 41 and 42. This is raising Lazarus from the dead. So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands his and his feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. So to me, like I said, it doesn't matter if you're wearing the priest collar and you're preaching in a church for 20 years. If when you're alone at your house and it's just you and God, you've never thought in your life that one prayer you've said to God has impacted you know, your life in a direct way because you have a relationship with God or you think all these other aspects of Calvinism. Yeah, which I it's think pretty scary, really isn't it? it? It's pretty scary because all these people out there that are saying he went out from us because he was not of us. Uh, the, everything that they say is the gospel that saves you. That guy uh, demonstrated. And I would argue, I would bet my bottom dollar that he believed 
what what everybody else did, if not even better, because he knows all the good arguments and more than you do or I do. And the people that are saying he went out from us because he was not of us showed every sign. And I would I would bet my bottom dollar he believed the thing that they say you have to believe. OK. And he and he spent his time defending it better and, than others. And he believed that thing, that thing about Christ that makes that people say is what saves you and justifies you. He believed that and he defended it a hell of a lot better than they do and, and put a lot more effort into that that uh, cause than they do. And then they're going to just turn around and say, he went out from us because they were not of us. And I, I say, that ought to scare the living crap out of you if you think that's what happened. So to Tyler, I say this. Were you lying when you made your arguments for the existence and the validity of Christ? Were you lying when you made those good arguments? Were they not good arguments? I, I mean, think of the words of Christ in the Gospels, what he taught. Think about the Old Testament and the legitimacy of the stories of how they occurred in history, the evidence. And then think of what Christ taught, that we know he, the person who existed, who said what he said, and the conviction of those who received that message and, and brought it to the world and the Reformation and the things that occurred and the men that died for what they believed in the martyrs to put that book on so many shelves collecting dust right now. Never has a man spoken like this. What do you mean you don't believe Tyler? I had to drive down there and smack you silly boy. Come home. <laughs>